what do you know? It's that time again. It is. What time is it? It's 24 minutes past 6 a.m. You know what that means? Thoughts on video today. The Wonderful 101, the new game from Hideki Kamiya. Is it Hideki Kamiya? Sign for him up. Hideo Kojima. Not Hideo Kojima. Kiji Inafune. Kiji Inafune. One of them made Mega Man, the other made this. I think it's Hideo Kojima. Not Hideo Kojima. So the guy responsible for this is the same guy who was responsible for Bayonetta, Beautiful Joe, some of the games that I've forgotten, and from what I hear, this game is a lot like Beautiful Joe. I'm not sure if the gameplay is like Beautiful Joe. I've never played a Beautiful Joe game before, but I've seen some gameplay of the games, and aesthetically, it does look kind of like Beautiful Joe. So, cool, I guess, for Beautiful Joe fans. I don't know why I'm holding the game up, you don't need to see the cover the whole time. I'm going to try and make this video a bit more coherent from the Pikmin 3 video, because I wasn't very coherent that time, so I'm going to try and be more coherent. The word coherence lost its meaning now. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not really that big on the story in this game. I, I'm not trying to say that I'm not a fan of the story. I just don't really know the story. I mean, there's something about an alien invasion and there's like sh battleships going around and big lizards with swords and flamey tails and you're a superhero, Wonder Red, and yeah, you're him. I'm not sure if he's the main character, if they're all the main character, but you start the game off playing as him, so he's the main character to me. Yeah, there's like aliens everywhere attacking this town without a name and you band together heroes to take them down. I don't know if that covers the whole game. I'll be honest, I didn't get to the end of the game for reasons I'll go into in a bit. But um, yeah, it's alright, I guess. It's the, it's the kind of game where the story doesn't matter, it's just to give the game a purpose. And yeah, I didn't really pay attention to the story. I mean, I wouldn't say I didn't pay attention to the game, but... I don't know, it didn't feel like it was that big on story. I feel like I say that a lot, even if I'm reviewing, like, bloody Bioshock Infinite. I still feel like I'm saying, the story doesn't matter, it's just a reason for the game to exist. I don't know, I feel like I say that a lot. And something else that I definitely feel like I say a lot is that the game definitely thrives on gameplay, which is pretty good if there are a few things that the game doesn't tell you a few things that I wish I knew from the beginning. And this is a common complaint about this game. I've heard a few other reviewers talk about this. Um, Scottish DuckTales is a reviewer that I really like. He does LPs and stuff. I'm not going to give him a shout out, but he does good, like, first impressions videos of games. He was talking about how um, there's this move called Unite Guts. There, pretty much every attack you do in this game starts with the word Unite in front of it. And pretty much Unite Guts is like your... It's like a counter-attack move, and there are some enemies that you can't beat unless you have a counter-attack move, like, um, Unite Guts. And from what I hear, it's, you can still beat them, but it's really, really difficult. Like, and now we're in, there's this tank enemy that, it killed me, like, five times. I was on Skype with my friend, and I was getting so angry. I was like, this is stupid. This tank is stupid. Stupid tank. My hair's wet, by the way, so if you're wondering why it's wet, it's because it's wet. And yeah, this tank was just completely wiping me out. Like, I'll have some gameplay put up. Like, it kept firing at me. And the game was kind of like Pikmin in the way where if um, some of the people in your group get taken down, you have to collect them back up, which I thought was kind of cool. It was a bit annoying at times, but yeah, it was kind of cool, I guess. And I just gave up on the game completely. I was going to make this video saying, the game is stupid, it's too hard, I can't do it. But I thought, you know what, let's just try looking it up. Let's try giving it another chance. And then I found out... Oh, there's a little tab hidden in the pause menu where you can buy a move that you need. And, I mean, I, I'm always complaining about games holding your hand with everything, like Arkham City's, like, hold X to run, press this button to do this, then this button to do this, then this button to do this. It's like, okay, I, what kid is choosing Arkham City as their first ever video game. They don't need to treat us like we're three years old game. And on the Wii U um, forum, it's, it's like an on-console forum called Miiverse, I pretty mu I made a message saying, are you getting stuck on the tank enemies like I am? If you are, go to the shop and buy Unite Guts because you really need it. And someone commented on it saying, um, I also said, um, I wish the game told me about that. But then someone commented saying, um, yeah, the game doesn't hold your hand. You can't just expect it to tell you everything. But the game actually does tell you quite a lot of stuff. Like, in the bottom left of the screen, it does give you instructions. But then there's this one thing that you need that the game never bothers to tell you about. Like, yeah, I get it. I like discovering things. But I couldn't continue the game until 
I looked it up on the internet, and the game doesn't have a manual. This is how the game just came in the box. Well, there was a disc there, if you're going to be a smart arse. There was a disc there. But like, it was just like a little bloody Club Nintendo thing. Software instructions, and... It's so... Can't get it out. And yeah, I know what they mean. I'm, I also like games that, you know, you discover new things every time you play, like, a secret move or something. But I... I was an hour into the game, and I didn't want to play it anymore. Because this thing, that I definitely feel like you should have had from the beginning, you had to go out and find for yourself and buy. And then, as soon as I got that, the game got a lot better. And I don't mean it became easier, it became a lot more fun, because later on in the game, you have to fight against two tanks, plus two giant robots, that you need to rely on this Unite Guts move. And I don't know how the hell I would have done that if it wasn't for that move. And I guess some people could say, yeah, but people, you can choose to get that. If you want, if you want to be hardcore, you could not get that and see if you can beat the game that way. But yeah, you could do that, but you could also just not use it, I guess. And when I was originally going to be doing this Force on video, that was my main problem about the whole, I can't beat the tougher enemies, they suck, the game is really hard, the game doesn't teach you anything, which I still kind of stand by. I still feel like there are a lot of things I don't understand yet. Ken Levine wants to stand for that. You know, not teaching you about the basics of the game. I don't think Ken Levine would have, would have done that. And it is a pretty good game. I still can't play for that long at a time. It does get kind of boring. I wouldn't say repetitive, but it does get kind of boring for me. I don't know. It's good. Um, but I don't know if that's the game's fault, though. I'm getting kind of... I can't play games for that long at a time anymore. I think the last time I played a game for a while, I played Tomb Raider for six hours. And I remember being like, oh my god, I'm not getting bored. That's the last time. So whenever I'm playing a game and I can't play it for more than an hour, I'm not going to put that against the game because that could just be me. But I still feel like it's worth mentioning I can't play this game for more than an hour at a time. I'm already like looking at the watch and it's like, oh, so it'd have been 40 minutes. And I guess it's a good idea that I started doing these thoughts on videos because... I'm only on Operation 2. There are 10 operations throughout the game. Each operation has 3 levels. I'm on Operation 2, level 1. I can't play it anymore. I, I just, I'm bored. I'm just too bored of it. So I guess I've already played the game for about 2 hours. So I guess it's a good thing that I'm doing a thoughts on video and not a real review. But at the same time you could also be saying, well if you've only played the game for a couple of hours, you can't, you don't really have a good opinion of the game to make a review about it, but I've only played it for two hours because I can't play it anymore. But it does feel like a really, really arcadey game, like it feels very smooth. Obviously if I put up a clip for you now, YouTube will dumb it down to 30 frames, but it does feel really, really arcadey. Like, you know, um, running around, beating up enemies, learning their attacks and using it against them with the Unite Guts, again, which is essential for this game, it all does feel very arcadey. I mean, it, it wouldn't work in an arcade because there was a lot to remember. But, I don't know, just the very, the, um, the wonderful 101's aesthetic. It just feels very, I can't really explain it. It feels like the kind of game that would work on, like, a arcade joypad, you know, with, like, the... Like the circle, a ball on the stick. I feel like that could work. I would, I, I would kind of like that actually. But something that you might have noticed about um, the recordings that I've been putting up on screen is that at times the camera can zoom out a lot, and I guess that's good for like a for HD TV. It can do that, but for recording, like if I'm showing you the gameplay, you might not be able to see everything that's going on. That isn't a legit complaint because games aren't made for reviews. They're made to play on a big TV, and it works on a big TV. But showing you the gameplay in a video doesn't really do it justice. You have to see it on the TV, I guess. And the game does feel very, very Japanese. Like, there's a part, um, I'll have the footage up on screen, when like, there's like this three-headed robo-dragon ripping up the Statue of Liberty, except obviously it's not called the Statue of Liberty. I've always felt like if I made a game that had the Statue of Liberty in it, I'd call it the Statue of Plagiarism. I've always wanted to do that. But now that I've said that, someone's going to steal that off me. And like, a couple of minutes later, is like this little boy that's talking to this gigantic lizard with a sword, and he's just talking to him like, you'll never get away with this, like it's an everyday thing to get whisked up and carried off by a huge lizard monster it's so silly but it's so good and like there's an, at other points when um they're in their non-superhero form and they transform it looks very sailor moody which is pretty cool i've never watched sailor moon but i've seen them i've seen them transform in the show and it looks a lot like this which is pretty cool i don't think it's intentional but um 
I've, yeah, I doubt it is intentional that I said it out loud. And there's another character in the game um, right there, Wonder Blue with a sword. I think he's meant to be like the sarcastic comic relief of the game. He says a lot of weird things that really threw me off. Like, um, he calls the character Noob Cakes at some point. I can't remember why he says it or how, but I remember he doesn't say... It doesn't say N-O-O-B, it's N two number zeros B, which is really weird. It's like... That might have made me laugh in 2008, but no one calls people, no one a noob anymore. Bro, hold up. Captain noob cakes? Really? Especially not with N00B. That's just really weird. He says a couple of other things that um, I wanted to write down. I'll probably put up some footage of it now, but I don't remember. I know he says, I know there are a lot of weird things said in the game, which I guess is, is kind of funny, I suppose. I like it when games like this show their sense of humor, especially when it's a Japanese game. I love foreign games. Foreign games? Is that PC? I don't feel like that's a PC thing to say. I don't know why. When Japanese games show a sense of humour, I don't know, I always love seeing it. And I'll quickly talk about the gamepad features um, real quick because I don't really have a lot of time. Um, there are little points in the game where you go inside these little buildings and um, the view suddenly changes to the gamepad and it's like real close up as you're squashing this little building and you got to do some puzzle to open up the door to to go out the back entrance and carry on the level. It's kind of cool, but it felt like, it felt like some, you know, Nintendo went to the building and said, hey, we need some gamepad features. Well, we're about to finish the game. We don't have anything for the gamepad. Well, throw something in for the gamepad. Oh, okay, about these buildings. Sounds good. It didn't feel natural, I guess. It felt like they were just suddenly thrown in, you know, just for the sake of, oh, it's a gamepad, so might as well put something on it. It was kind of cool, I guess, but it felt like it kind of slowed the game down. Like, being up a giant robot, s scorpion robots, tanks. Oh, go inside a little building, do a puzzle, then leave. I don't know, I guess it breaks the gameplay up a little bit in a good way, but I don't know. I, did, I thought it was a bit weird. It didn't feel natural. And so that's the wonderful 101. I can already see this game failing so much. Apparently it only sold 5,000 copies in Japan, which is... Awful. If that's as bad as I think it is, I haven't compared it to anything. But, oh my god, I think some of the most obscure games I have on the PS2, I think they sold more than this. That's really bad, 5,000 copies. So, um, this is a good game, no doubt. In about, probably in less than a year's time, you will see this game for like... Of £10, maybe like $10. Like, um... A Bargain bin or something in like a, a local shop store nearby. I don't oh, get to the point already. This game will definitely go down in price. If you're looking for a new game to play on the Wii U, I would say get this. I do feel like this is the kind of game that will definitely fade into obscurity as like a, a little weird Wii U launch title. Um, and apparently it is very short. Like I said, I never got that far in it, but, um, it took me about an hour to be one operation so that's 10 hours i don't know that's not that bad for me um but i, I beat games pretty slowly i only have like oh my god over like a minute to finish this video uh, i should have cleared my camera memory bloody hell it does play like the kind of game that would have a cult following if that makes any sense i don't know it does feel like the kind of game in a couple of years time people will say remember the wonderful 101 that was a really good game and it, it is it's a pretty good game i know some people that call this game a masterpiece and i personally wouldn't go that far but i can see a lot of people really liking this game so you know if you want a new wii u game to get i would say definitely get this because it's going to be cheap soon anyway. Maybe it'll be rare. I don't know. I don't know. What am I talking about? And so that's my thoughts on the wonderful 101. Oh and so that's my thoughts on the wonderful 101. I only have 14 seconds left to record. So see you next time, everyone. Goodbye. That went all right, I think. That went pretty well. I'm going to wait the camera. I'm going to wait for the memory to go out. Three, two, one.